the most important thing about Google or what they're looking for are called backlinks. They want to see other websites talking about you. The more websites that talk about you, the more trust Google gives to you. And then they look at the keywords on your website to figure out what to rank you for. But it doesn't work the other way around. Without backlinks, it's pretty much impossible to rank on Google. And a backlink is just a clickable link from another website that points to yours. So if you're reading an article on the New York Times and in there it says Brandon Leibowitz and you click on it and it goes to my website, then I'd be getting a backlink from the New York Times. Welcome to Story Power, a bi-monthly podcast where my guests and I geek out about the stories we are passionate about in all different genres, styles, and formats. My name is Lucinda Sage Midgordon, and I started this podcast in the summer of 2020 at the beginning of the COVID-19 pandemic. As I watched the reaction of my friends, family, and social media circle, I noticed that many people turned to stories for comfort and help in making sense of the craziness going on around them. My goal was to do the same for my listeners, but as I chatted with my guests throughout the first year, I discovered that their personal stories were the most fascinating thing about each episode. Neil Gaiman says, Fairy tales are more than true, not because they tell us that dragons exist, but because they tell us that dragons can be beaten. I now know that sharing our experiences with others helps us defeat our own dragons. It is our stories that connect us to one another. Let's see what wisdom today's guest has to share with us. Today is episode 78, and Brandon Leibowitz is my guest. And Brandon, I'm so excited to talk to you because I know nothing about marketing and promotion, and I want to learn something from you. So welcome to the show. Thanks for having me on today. Tell us what you do. I do digital marketing. So mainly focus on what's called search engine optimization, and that's ranking websites on Google. So whatever you search on Google, There's ads at the top, but right below the ads is the organic, the free listings. And I help people get ranked in those free listings on Google or any search engine. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. I I was going to ask you what SEO stood for, and then you just said it. Mm -hmm. Say it again. Yep. So SEO is search engine optimization, which means optimizing your website for the different search engines, which really is just Google for the most part. Mm -hmm. Google kind of runs everything, but there's a ton of other search engines out there but primarily everything really is geared towards Google. Yeah, right. So then um, do you, how do you find your clients? And when you have a client, what do you do? How do you help them? Um, they usually find me because I'll rank my website for keywords that are related to my business. So hopefully they could find me that way. If not, not doing that good of a job, but they find me do that. Word of mouth referrals. I do classes and oh, cool. tons of different ways to get traffic. Yeah. Because you don't want to just focus on one way to get traffic. You got to get traffic from as many different sources as possible. As long as it's targeted traffic, that's all that matters. So like Yelp is a good one. And just trying to know who your audience is, where and where they are. That way you can be in front of them at the right times, at the right places, and then at the right moments when they're searching, hopefully. Yeah. And then you have a podcast too, right? So that's another stream of what, the way people can find you. Mm-hmm. Yep. I do a podcast and yep, teach classes and... Now, what's the name of your podcast again? Claim Your SEO Gift, right? Is that it? No, it'd be Brandon Leibowitz. Oh, that's just your podcast name, Brandon Leibowitz. Okay, cool. And who are the guests that you have on your podcast? I don't have any guests. I don't even know if it's really a podcast. It's just me doing my classes that I would teach oh, I online see. and I just put them up as a mm-hmm. podcast because I can't really do them in person. So yeah, I do them as webinars. And when you do it as a webinar on Zoom, it records the audio and the video and the audio you can make into a podcast and the video you can throw up on YouTube and get yeah. more visibility that way. Oh, that's cool. That's great. So what are some of the classes that you teach? You teach all aspects of digital marketing from SEO, social media, email marketing, Google Analytics, Google Mm -hmm. Search Console, talk about Facebook, Instagram, Mm -hmm. have a class on Twitter, a class on YouTube, a class on Pinterest, a class on how to do keyword research, a class on Google Ads, a class on Yelp and 
class on local SEO and a bunch of different topics like those. Oh my goodness. I'm already lost. <laughs> I have a lot of classes. <laughs> so I might have to take a class so I understand what you're talking about. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm old. I know, you know, I'm I'm struggling just to get my podcast up. But uh, tell what would be the very most important tip for someone who wants to uh, make sure that their their website or their social media or their classes or their podcast is up near the top at the Google when somebody searches Google. The most important thing about Google or what they're looking for are called backlinks. They want to see other websites talking about you. The more websites that talk about you, the more trust Google gives to you. And then they look at the keywords on your website to figure out what to rank you for. But it doesn't work the other way around. Without backlinks, it's pretty much impossible to rank on Google. And a backlink is just a clickable link from another website that points to yours. So if you're reading an article on the New York Times and in there it says Brandon Leibowitz and you click on it and it goes to my website, then I'd be getting a backlink from the New York Times. Ah. So the websites that mention you the more trust Google gives to you. And then they look at the keywords on your website to figure out what to rank you for. But it doesn't really work the other way around. Without those backlinks, Google just doesn't trust you and they're not going to give you those rankings. Is there a way you can get the backlinks? Mm -hmm. There are tons of different ways to get backlinks. But nowadays, it's all about quality, not the number of backlinks. In the past, Mm -hmm. if I had 100 backlinks and you had 200 backlinks, you would rank higher than me. Now it's really the quality of these backlinks. And Ah. quality backlink means it comes from a relevant website, an authoritative website. So that's the main thing is just relevancy. And there's a ton of different ways to get the backlinks. There's tools that let me look at anyone's website. So I can look at your website, it's backlinks, you can look at mine and everything's transparent. So I would just go on Google, search for your keywords, see who's on that first page of Google, and then use these different tools to look at their backlinks. And then one by one, reach out to the sites that are linking to them because they're linking out to your competitors. They're more than likely probably gonna link to you if you just initiate that conversation and build that relationship. But these pay tools, they're about, you have to pay for them, but they're worth the money. They're going to show you all this information. They're called Moz is one, M-O-Z or Ahrefs or SEMrush. They're, those are kind of the bigger ones and just kind of pick one and use that. And that's going to show you everything you need to know about your competitors' backlinks. And then one by one, you can start acquiring them on your own. So I'm assuming you talk about those on some of your classes. Yep, that's the most important part of the SEO. Without yeah. that, nothing matters, really. Yeah, yeah. Oh, wow, yeah. So how did you get started doing that? I just kind of fell into it after I graduated from college, got my degree in business marketing. And the first job I got out of school was doing digital marketing and helping out with all aspects of their digital, doing SEO, doing social media, doing paid ads, doing email marketing and Doing all these different things and just realized back in the, this is in 2007, just realized that everyone's probably going to have a website in the future mm-hmm. and SEO is a way to get free traffic. So why spend money on paid ads when you can get up there for free? And that's really what I've focused on over the years is try to tap into that free traffic from Google. Yeah, that's great because I, yeah, I don't want ads on my website. And so, yeah, I love that. I love that there's a, a way that I can get it out there for free instead of um, instead of having somebody have to wade through an ad to get to my to get to my content no which ads work but they're just expensive and people trust the organic more than they trust the ad so Mm -hmm. organic is always going to perform better Mm long-term and be more cost effective long-term as well yeah so now you've got a company right do you have staff members and what does your company your, well, you said what your company does, but how, when did you start your company? And in 2007, right when I started doing the digital marketing, I realized that I could pick up freelance clients here and there, and that's also what kept me interested in doing the digital marketing. Is I could just go to a local business nearby and be like, "Hey, do you want to make it to the top of Google?" and pick up clients here and there. So I've always kind of been doing freelance work while working full time, mm-hmm. and just built it up over the years. Whereas able to quit my full-time job and just focus on this solely and really help out with the SEO, but also help out a little bit with paid ads, but I prefer the SEO just because it works, but paid ads work as well. It's just, they're expensive, but you have to have ads sometimes because SEO takes about six months to take full effect. So 
Uh-huh. While you're waiting for that, paid ads will supplement and support you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's great. What are your, do you have any other interests besides that? Or are they all your interests centered around helping people with promoting their websites and their blogs no. and so on and so forth? No, no. I'd like to disconnect from work. You can't just work all the time. So it's good to have that work-life balance and love skateboarding, and snowboarding, and traveling, and just getting out there and not being behind the computer screen all day long. It's oh, not wow. good to be sitting there, but Fortunately, when you have your own business, you do work a lot more. So definitely yeah. work a lot more, but try to have that work-life balance and get out as much as possible. Yes. So where's your favorite place to go snowboarding? Well, I'm in Los Angeles and Mammoth is pretty close by. So oh yeah. Mountain is really big and it's a good one for California. Oh, that's cool. And then where and then you you said you like to travel. Where do you go? Where have you been? What's your favorite place? I'd say my favorite place would either going maybe the Galapagos or probably mm-hmm. on a safari is probably the best by far. Safari was amazing and recommend that everyone go on a safari, but Galapagos is really cool too, being close to nature and animals and yeah. seeing them being really curious about people and humans and not being scared was really a cool thing to see. Because not a lot of people go to the Galapagos. Is that why? And so the animals aren't used to having humans there. (laughs) Yeah. They limit it to a certain amount of people every year that could go there. So yeah, try to keep it as a nature preserve. Yeah. That's probably, that's probably good. And was your safari like a photo safari? Mm -hmm. Yeah. It was going in Kenya, going around, all these different places. Uh huh. Uh-huh. That was probably the best. Seeing the animals not in cages and right. free roaming and in their natural habitat was the best by far. I yes. highly recommend everyone do a safari one time in their life if they can because yeah. it's so amazing to see those animals out there. Yeah, that's cool. And like, do you, do you have, do you like movies or do you read books or do you play video games? Well, that's sitting in front of the computer again, I guess. You might not play. Yeah, too many screens, too many screens for eyes. <laughs> it's not good. So try to avoid that, but sometimes I'll watch TV, but when you have your own company, you're like, all right, should I watch TV or maybe I'll just do a little bit of work. So oh, I don't really yeah. watch too much, but I'll watch like documentaries are interesting and fun to watch. <laughs> But yeah, I don't watch too much TV or movies, but trying to get better, try to get a little bit more work-life balance. Yes. So working so much and get a little bit of free time back. And then, yeah, it would be nice to be able to relax every once in a while, I'll sit back and watch some movies and TVs and just hang yeah, out. Now, now, do you like, do you like nature documentaries or what kind of documentaries do you like? Mm-hmm. Any documentary for the most part. I just feel like they're interesting just learning stuff and it yep. doesn't have to be I mean nature is always the best you can't go wrong watching yes. documentaries but any documentary for the most part I'd be interested in yeah part, every single one but majority of them we watched some really interesting ones about whales not too long ago oh well it was last week and oh man that that was fascinating mm-hmm. to learn because they're still they they're just starting to learn about the whale dialogue you know how they talk to each other how they communicate with each other and they're learning a little bit about what the different sounds are and um and that that the sounds travel so far through the water it's it, that was just amazing and the different habits of the different types of whales and what they ate and yeah it's all super interesting watching those nature and that's why the safari i feel like stood out being able to mm-hmm. be there in person and seeing them not on a screen but mm-hmm. being a couple feet away from you which is a little intimidating at times but yes really cool to see did you get to see elephants because i love elephants african elephants particularly but right. did you get to see any oh yeah i saw tons of elephants and pretty much saw everything that you could want to see out there lions and yeah birds. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Wow. How many people were on your safari with you? I think it was like six people, maybe. Oh, oh that's probably a, a good size. A good yeah, it size. wasn't too bad. So it was nice. Got some room in the Jeep and weren't yeah. all scrunched in there. Yeah. Yeah. 
Have you, and where in the United States have you traveled that you really enjoyed? Um, I like New York and or Colorado has some good mountains for mm-hmm. snowboarding and yeah, I would say those places are my, my favorites or Austin was a cool city that I've been to. Oh, but, I've never been to Austin. Yeah. Yeah. I liked Austin except for it's a little too hot out there, but other than uh, that, really nice. <laughs> yeah. I live in Southern Arizona, although we're in the mountains, but Arizona's hot. Yeah. Right okay. now it's the hot time of the year. So, and if you're in California, you kind of understand that hot time of the year right now. Yeah. Hot yeah. is not too bad for us. So hot yeah. is like eighties. So. Yeah. You, oh, well, we've been close to 100 already yeah, up in the mountains. Yeah. They've had 100 in Tucson in April, which was unusual. That's but uh, but yeah, do you guys have monsoon there? We have monsoon here in southern Arizona, in yeah. Arizona. No, no, not around where I'm at in Los Angeles. But yeah, luckily, oh. don't have to deal with all those. Thunderstorms. No, I don't get much rain. Every once in a while, we need more rain out here. We yes. definitely need more rain. Definitely, here. yes. We need some business too. But in a way, thunderstorms uh, disrupt because it like the electricity goes out. <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah, that part's not fun. Not fun at all. <laughs> and even right, even though we have solar panels that we don't have a you know there's we're still hooked up to the grid. So the what extra we generate energy we generate goes to the grid instead of you know into the battery so when the when the storm some happens sometimes we lose our internet mm-hmm. and electricity and our internet and everything so oh dear yeah you don't want that happening uh, it's nice to be connected we realize how dependent we are yes. if you lose that connection i know really so have you lived in los angeles all your life for the most part, yeah, pretty much. Got spoiled oh. out here with the weather, and it's too nice to leave. So, mm-hmm. yeah, I've got moving other places, but that weather, it's just that constant 70 degrees is mm-hmm. being by the beach and having the mountains close by. You're not a surfer, though. Not too much, no. no. <laughs> I thought it would be easy, but doesn't translate over from skateboarding and snowboarding <laughs> for some strange reason. It's a lot different. So trying to, but not the best at it. That's interesting because you would think that it would translate, but maybe it's because, you know, underneath your skateboard and your snowboard, it's a little more stable. Water's not very stable. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, right. A lot of upper body strength and snowboarding, skateboarding is more in the legs. So it's different muscles trying to paddle. Oh, yeah. Standing up. Yeah, yeah. So have you ever been out like uh, just for fun to go out whale watching or anything like that? Because that would be a great place to go whale watching where you live. Did that in high school and middle school. We would do field trips, go out on the boats and do whale watching. And there's uh-huh. a lot of spots near where I grew up there that you could just sit outside and watch oh, the whales kind of come by in the wintertime. <clears throat> when they're migrating. Mm-hmm. yeah that's great yeah we're going to the oregon coast but it will be in july and so we won't probably be able to see whales very much because they'll already be in mexico by then <laughs> i go chase them down to mexico down all around. Yeah. well we that's right we live a mile from the border but we're not close to the water so <laughs> that makes it a little tricky then <laughs> yeah really mm-hmm. yeah so do you have any other pastimes that you want to talk about or anything else about your business or about your life that you want to talk about? No, well, really just try to, I mean, the main things I like doing when I'm not working, going down to the beach, relaxing, trying to hang out down there, mm-hmm. down more walks, skateboarding or bicycling and just bicycle. try to get out there as much as possible. Get that work-life balance. That way you're not just work, yes. work, work, because you got to have that balance. You can't just be doing marketing all day long behind the screen it's not good yeah I would think that marketing might be kind of a well I I don't know much about it but it might be kind of a hard thing because you have to be working at it all the time it's not something that you can just do once and then oh well that's good (laughs) unfortunately no it's not one and done with the digital marketing it's always constantly evolving and changing and 
trying to stay up to date with all the changes, new sites, yeah, TikTok and all that stuff emerge or Facebook's kind of like fades away and stuff like that. And just trying to be up on all those trends. Yeah. And do you like subscribe to podcasts or magazines or um, do you take courses or something to keep up with the changes? Yep. All of that. That's the best way. Just read, learn as much as you can and try to stay up to date and just read news stuff mm-hmm. that's put out, test things out, mm-hmm. try things out because you can't just trust what you read. You have to just double check sometimes, make sure it actually works. But reading, watching videos, doing classes is the best way to learn. That's how I learned it. Yeah. I didn't really go to school for it. My first job I got, I didn't know anything about digital marketing. They said, don't worry, we don't know anything either. We're going to take you to classes and workshops and learn alongside you, which was interesting. And oh, yeah. back in 2007, and that's what just kept me going with it because I had no plans to do it and just fell into that job. And that is so cool that that they paid for all that e- extra education for you and they were supportive and they wanted to learn with you. Man, that sounds like kind of an ideal job. I got lucky. Definitely got lucky with that job mm-hmm. for sure. Mm-hmm. Helped out a lot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now, um, if somebody that is listening, because unfortunately this episode is not going to air until 2023, but I want to put it up on Patreon for my patrons and so that people can find you um, long before your episode airs. Uh, so where can they find you? Yeah. So everyone that's listening or watching uh i create a special gift for them if they go to my website seo optimizers.com that's seo o-p-t-i-m-i-z-e-r-s.com forward slash gift they can find that there along with my contact information and all my classes and everything is all on that oh cool all right yeah and then in the show notes i will put all of your social media links and I will put that website too, but I want to have that website for when I put it up on Patreon so that people, because, you know, I have artists and authors who might really benefit some of them. Some of the authors that I know have published independently. And so they might need help with marketing and promotion. That's kind of a hard thing for artists. Yeah, no, definitely open to helping out as much as possible. And trying to just help them tap into that audience and get more eyeballs on their content or whatever they're producing. Yeah, really. That's great. So do you have a wide range of clients, not just artists I'm imagining or creative people, I'm imagining you have some other client kind types of clients. Yeah, pretty much across the board. Don't focus on one industry. Just as long as you have a good website and a good product or service, then I'd help you out for the most part. So it's not really just focusing on one niche. Like some people just focus on dentists or lawyers. Oh. I can just help out with anyone that needs it for the most part. Yeah. Or somebody who has a product to sell. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You don't, you don't help them build the websites though, right? No, I just get the traffic. Right. No, that's a whole different one. You're all about just the traffic. I love that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, that's so cool. Do you have anything else you want to say? I think that is it. Covered pretty much everything. Oh, great. Brandon, I'm so glad we got back together again. We were going to meet on another day, but I'm glad that we got together because I know a lot of creative people who will really be interested in the things that you have to offer. So I'm going to spread the word about you. Sounds good. Thanks so much for having me on and I'm glad to help spread the word as well. Before I go, I'd like to give a big shout out to Podmatch, which I call a dating service for podcasters. Since I joined their platform, I have met so many wonderful people from all over the world, and they make the matches so easy that if you are a podcaster or you have a message that you want to share, you might want to consider checking them out. The affiliate link is at the bottom of my show notes on my website at Sagewoman Chronicles at sagewoman.life. Part of what I love about them is that they promote civil conversations. And can't we use that right now? So if you check them out, tell them Lucinda sent you. I'd also like to invite you to my Patreon community, where we will have chats with authors or creators. We'll have 
member chats about the stories that they love, and occasionally we'll have extra episodes or uncut episodes of Story Power. So please go check out my Patreon page at patreon.com slash story power without the hyphen, all one word. I hope you enjoyed the show. If you like what you heard, please share it with a friend and give us a review on your favorite podcast app. It will help people find us. You'll find the show notes for this episode at my website, Sage Woman Chronicles at sagewoman.life. You can leave a comment there. And remember, as Philip Pullman said, after nourishment, shelter, and companionship, stories are the thing we need most in the world. Until next time, this is Lucinda Sage Midgordon. Thanks for listening.